Only two days after popping the champagne and partying with the national champs, Coach Philip Rivers was quick to negotiate with Power Four conferences. With the Mountain West contract up for renewal, Coach Philip Rivers and founder Tony Hawk both agreed that it was time to move on from the Mountain West. For all the memories, we salute you, Mountain West. And thanks to some key defensive stops, this is the first time I'm able to say this. We can really just ice this one out. Oh my goodness, Cozart. We have conquered the mountain made the climb we are gonna go nine and four in year four and we're gonna take home the hawaii bowl and your salona beach sponges are mountain west champions on top of the mountain we are king of the hill who is going to stop us? Number one in the nation, national champs. Everyone wanted to soak up these sponges as they were happy to wine and dine us. And after careful consideration, the team wanted a competitive growing conference that also made the most geographical sense. With that in mind, Salona Beach is excited to announce we will be joining the Big 12 this fall. Coach Deion Sanders is about to learn a whole new meaning for primetime football when he goes up against us. We will see these guys week nine in Boulder, but the path forward won't be easy for the defending champs as we have to face number one seeded Miami in our first game. Not to mention the Big 12 has a tougher slate of opponents here in general. The defending champs start off the season by welcoming in the best recruiting class in Salona Beach history. Check out receiver Landry here, the best receiver coming out of high school, hands down. Extremely gifted, put up amazing numbers in Arizona and he's going to be a difference maker. I got him plugged in starting in the lineup at wide receiver three. He's too talented to bench. Prior number 79, the best offensive tackle we've ever brought in as well. An A plus class. A lot of guys did get redshirted because of the upperclassmen. All in all, I think we've been doing a great job rebuilding. So taking a look at the team needs here, it's no surprise. It's only kicker and middle linebacker on defense. Most of the other spots are plugged up. Now in a power four conference, I am intrigued to see who's going to be interested in coming to our school and off the rip we have a five star but more impressive a ton of top four star talent i think they're all gonna get on my board for now oh my goodness the list does not end this has to be the first time that i filled over 30 spots with four star prospects and up we really get to pick from the cream of the crop so let's scout out these guys and see if any of them are hidden gems and there we go robert randall from central point oregon is playing up to five star and above 81 overall and what's up with these oregon boys man brett Rowland, a six foot four middle line linebacker at 79 overall we need a linebacker that would do the trick last thing before we jump into the season we got a new defensive coordinator jay hill out here so what i'm gonna do is do some injury prevention gonna go no fly zone shut down a little bit of charge and then i believe tackling is gonna be important as well as ball burglar did y'all hear in the next game there's gonna be more than 10 branches to build your coach up in we are gonna have our hands full as greg sparks is a first team all-american for miami david barry's the only guy to crack the first team list and chad slasher cracked the second team list all right all right i just found three 79 overall players on the recruiting panel we want all of them and since we have the lead i'm gonna try the nick saban ability here offer them the scholarship any insta commits of the three ah but wait there's another one stan gonzalez no carlos came through for me 73 overall 82 pass block 77 run block we need that omar from carrollton texas another stud defensive end with 87 power move 80 finesse we got a lot of guys we can look at here and continue this era of dominance hey let's go the 99 club welcome to the entire offense we have made it 99 overall offense, 95 defense, 97 overall. You know what? On paper, we can hang with Miami. Sparks, their 98 overall quarterback going up against Miller, our 99 overall guy. And let the games begin. A uncommon sight, a rainy San Diego here. You know what sponges do when it's wet? They soak it up. Let's freaking go, baby. Keep the Big 12 symbol on the field. That's right. We're a Big 12 representative this year. So let's get it started in here. Mo Bamba's playing, blasting through the speakers of this stadium. Everyone's getting rowdy. It's go time. And the first play of the season is a handoff stretch to scope down the side. Big run to kick it off. One good run is all we got. And we're punting it back here to Miami. So they've traveled all the way across from Florida to San Diego. And let's see if we can take advantage of the jet lag. They're starting off with a 
the handoff, and he is getting blown up. David Brooks, minus six. Oh, you know, just your casual one seed versus two seed here in the first game of the season. Forget the non-conference warm-up. It's straight into fireworks out here, and he had us all day to throw. Finds Burley. I guess that's what happens when you have only three guys rushing. They're going back to the ground. Sparks is dropped. Jamie Stone, number 44 on that one. I got to get used to calling a few new players' names out here because uh, there's some guys that have turned over and graduated. Miami just outside the red zone here. It's really time to soak it up, guys. We have to make some stops. Second and one, speed option. He's got his man Brooks here breaking a tackle. First and goal. I want to see the defense step up here in the red zone, and that's not going to happen. Hold on now. Great late deflection there, my guy. I was counting him out here just a, little, just a little early, and now he's gonna dump it out, and we're gonna stop Love short fourth and goal. Play action here. Miller's got his man Stone Boston. Yes, sir. Keep this drive going. Yes, we got Cade first down. Zach Miller delivering the ball. We know he can give, and here he is again to his man Cade. Isn't it crazy that he's an upperclassman now? I feel like Zach Miller just got here, but at the same time, he has already seen so much from this team, and he's going across to Landry, the number one receiver out of high school. And after that collegiate first, let's top off this drive with a touchdown to Brian Williams. I think my initial impression of the defense this year is that this is probably the most well-rounded unit we've ever had out here on the field. A couple superstars, but mainly just a well-rounded high overall group. Same thing with offense out here, minus the 99 overall quarterback. Everyone's mid 80s and up. Even the backup running back Wiggins out here has got some serious potential. Third and long, I feel a little bit of pressure coming in. We're going to just dump one deep to Landry. And I thought he came down with it. Oh my goodness. Miami defense did get the hold and now it's back and forth. We're on a defense defense and who let right open oh my goodness looks like this is the type of game we have in store right now and i'm just gonna dump that one out the scope way to get the first miami simply doesn't go across the country to have anything go wrong they come to play and so did landry i'm telling y'all landry just feels special out here like there's no other way to say it except Oh my gosh, another opportunity in and out the hands. Good defense. But as I was saying before, I got really interrupted. It's not every day you get a true freshman that comes out to play like this. And on that pass to true freshman Landry, our boy Zach Miller in his junior season passes Adam Allen for all-time passing yards. That is an incredible feat. I don't want to take anything away from Zach Miller in that moment, but we have some dogs on the bench, man. I'm scared to see what some of these other quarterbacks will become. Like, no joke, we have a true freshman just sitting there with 90-plus throw power. My point is, I think we have more 99s in the tank. Second half football, we're down by three points. That's right. Before half, they had a magical strike in a blink of an eye. And so here we are, third down, looking to make a stop, and, well, no one's able to cover love today. Always a challenge to go up against arguably your hardest opponent of the year in week one. Field goal was no good, so our offense takes over. Massive fourth down here. You already know Philip Rivers is an aggressive coach, and Scope bouncing around. Get, oh my gosh, that was the hardest four yards, and he didn't get the first down. I thought for sure it was gonna clear, but we can breathe a sigh of relief because defense did their job, and now with an underhand to Scope, fighting for the last yards there, fourth and one. Little deja vu here, but only one yard it needed this time, not four or five, and come on, dude. Usually we're successful, it feels like, when we try to go for it on fourth down. Just a minute 30 left, we gotta stop the run here, that's a third down. Third and two, he's going out to the option here, gonna keep it, has a great chunk. We work this hard, let's not give it up now. I mean, third and goal, can we finish it? And how is this love dude so open? Got an interesting look here on offense and just thrown down. Third and massive. We're gonna have to just take this out play to Cade for 12 back. Fourth and four down by 10. It is definitely go for it territory. And I'm gonna take the curl, the Cade. Way to hold on. It's time for Miller to turn it up a notch here as he's trying to match what Sparks is doing on the other side. Second and inches. There's our guy Landry making a play. Third and short, going with the speed option. Miller will just keep it himself. I think he got enough. Looks like Zach was not good after that last hit. So it is backup Harmon in who does not have the speed whatsoever gets stripped sacked fumble and yep you see the scoreboard correctly despite our valiant effort Miami was too much to handle starting off the season 0 and 1 it is gonna be a tough climb back to the natty that is not the type of game the defending national champs wanted in their return so uh, 0-1 to begin the season. We got some work to do. This is massive. We got the lead on Brett Roland, gave him a scholarship, 79 overall linebackers coming our way. But losing to Miami was not massive. And I'm gonna need some vengeance here in the Battle of the Beaches, going up against Coastal Carolina. They're coming to town. 
I need to open up a whooping. Outside of that Miami game, I feel like many more games should be more in line to the type of opponent we see here with low 80 overall talent. When all is said and done, Zach Miller did not do a whole lot for us as I know he normally can. It really did feel like that Miami had too much control that game. So I really need to see Miller flex his muscle in this one and hello, what was that? Not sure how things fell apart so fast. So I'm gonna go for it on fourth down and Landry came through. Talk about trust and building confidence for a young receiver and there it is, his first collegiate touchdown. Zach Landry is gonna be special here for Salona Beach, I can tell. Now on defense, it's time to clamp down Coastal Carolina. Can't let these guys do anything silly. It is a rivalry game, yes, but I want this to be so lopsided that it hurts. Back on, oh my goodness, the pressure is immense. Like we have no time out here. For having such a high overall, that is something I still notice is that plays get blown up on the offensive line. I feel better about my odds running a fourth down play against Coastal than Miami, and yeah, that pays off. Well, let's respond here with some curl flats, Cade, gets us right into the red zone area. Brought in a few of the younger guys out here on offense and it opens up once more for Landry, a boy. And just as the clock is about to expire, there's Avery, the other freshman receiver. First and goal, let's let Wiggins plunge on in. Yes, sir. Third down, you can kind of tell that this is becoming a game we were hoping it would become. For now, let's keep trying to get more points and just run it up. That's what we want to see. Guys like Dwayne Cade making an immediate difference. So far, we've only limited Coastal to four total yards and we have 180 something. Love to see this. And there we go again. Nifty move, first and goal. Keeping it hot, Stone Boston fighting forward. Yeah, I think it's safe to say Zach Miller stepped up his game in this one. With his second TD pass here, that's Brian Williams, who also sets a record. Congrats to him. Sometimes rivalry games are much closer. In this case, it's back to the blowout fashion. Now is probably the time I start sparing you the details because you already know what's happening here. I'm going to keep running it up. This time, Tony Wiggins up the middle has a hole and convoy to guide him in. Before half, they're actually getting here a few yards and they want that first down. Not quite. Disaster strikes. We gave Coastal a good position here to just cash in. Let's try to do the impossible. Four verticals, 15 seconds left. I want more points. And yes, Cade is going to be the one to take us there. Yes, sir. Hustling back up to the line, quickly snapping it again. I want someone to take us even further Landry all the way down first and goal I'm choosing not to call a timeout because I think we can snap it quick and make something happen there it is Stone Boston Zach Miller and yeah you guys guessed it that one was over without a doubt here beating the rival school and handing them that whooping we needed just to get right again and we're up to one and one Salona Beach fans are excited about claiming the coast again for Gosh, we've been doing it for years now. Jumping back into the recruiting panel, we got some tight leads on some recruits, so let's offer scholarships, and that's exactly what I was hoping to see in real time. The Saban Factor, we just land an 81 overall gem guard. That Saban Factor is seriously a game changer as we just snag another guy, BJ Goins. Let's just go down the list. Couldn't get anyone else at the moment, but let's schedule some visits, and sure, some of the guys that are interested in us, let's bring them to Baylor Week, where we'll take on the 10th seed. Let's go, man. Our first taste of Big 12 action. It's conference play, and we're going up against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Week one lost to Miami. Week two, massive dub we're back on track right where we need to be in our first big 12 game this is a monumental moment talk about playing in a bigger stage than the mountain west right now it's go time you can just feel it out here as the away team we have a tough opponent on the defensive line just wreaking havoc struggled to get the ball out even those last two plays there we go conversion third and nine read option for miller he's got it and some zach miller time baby and bouncing out of that. Continuing to soak up Oklahoma State every chance we get. There's Tim Williams across the middle. This rollout to the right is one of my favorite plays because then you can just tuck it and run. Big third down here. Let's just dump it out to Williams once more. It's a big drive for him here and we're gonna flick this out to the fullback. Hicks fighting forward. The former tight end converted fullback. And we know he's got talent so let's give it to him again on the carry. Yes sir. Looking to make a statement here in our first ever Big 12 game. Brown and Oklahoma State have other ideas. Penalties push these guys back and a third and forever to go. It's not gonna go. Across the middle we go. It's Landry. You know, I think all the workouts with Jarvis Landry have paid off for our guy, Zach. Another big third down here. He's gonna step up to the right, scramble, take it back to the middle. 
big play. I saw a sea of orange coming for my quarterback, and there's another orange taking down Nolan Scope. Running has become significantly harder, I've noticed, and maybe I'm just calling the wrong plays, as that's Zach Miller's first interception of the year. That's a bummer. So it's third and four after all, and we brought the pressure in to get the stop punt that ball back turnover in the end zone no big deal we'll just bring it back to the red zone and get right here into the goal line our fullback scored the first time why not let the big body tight end try a second time and he's denied instead they stack the line and we're gonna scramble out to the right dump it to stone boston money we're here before halftime and i know oklahoma state wants points it's just a matter of can they get the ball going down the field not only are things not going the best right now for them they are also having penalties hurt them so with 50 seconds left we'll We'll happily take the ball back and go get some points i th oh frick i did not know i took control rushing zach miller there and i just totally fumbled the bag i guess i felt bad for their lack of offensive production you could say and he steps up well it should be looking a lot better on the scoreboard than it is right now just need the offense to get better and the defense to continue to hold and so far our offense is definitely not holding up to their end of the bargain so things are getting scary out here and we have to step up on defense as hard as we're already playing huge third down lily in motion this is probably going to be a rush and it's read off to lily and it's read out like a book really not sure who messed with us at halftime here because we are not the same team asking the defense to work overtime here they are putting on a show it's clamps all over the place and i wish the offense has more to say for how stellar the defense is playing but this could be exactly the drive we need to turn it around red zone action and the pressure is coming in once more let's take our time and deliver it to landry pulling out all the stops here we're going with the slant across the middle somehow shaked it off and through a dock. Dude, it's actually scary lining up in this formation because they always do us dirty. However, on fourth and goal, Landry's the one doing the dirt. Bringing in a blitz on third down. Yes, defense stops again. This is Penn, just masterclass, three and outs. And in the waning moments of this one, I'm gonna hand it back to the defense to finish the dang job. That brought up a big, crucial fourth down and delivering the crushing blow. This game's over turn it on over g to the g to the g g g salona beach comes into oklahoma gets the job done now two win one salona beach gets another test here in the big 12 going up against the baylor bears this time bears from waco texas coming down to salona beach and oh yeah did i forget to mention we have some stud recruits coming to visit us so we gotta show out and oh yeah did i also forget to mention this isn't your ordinary baylor bear team they are seventh ranked in the nation we are number three, so it's going to be a top 10 matchup. Zach Miller, a little quiet, but efficient. So far, he's had a quiet, then big, then quiet game, so I'm expecting a big one now. Baylor has been doing so well this season, 3-0, and oh, and I hate to be a team to give him a loss, but someone has got to do it, and I think we're going to be that team. Pass midfield, quick drop out to Landry, and yo, he's going the wrong direction, but he stays up and keeps moving. Oh my gosh. That was the toughest six yard reception I've ever seen. That is our guy right there and under pressure, Boston delivers. Landry went in Hulk mode. Can he do it again? Bouncing off one, but not seven like last time. If our receiver is gonna Hulk up, I'm gonna deliver the ball to him every time. And yeah, I forced it to him that time. Lewis with the interception. That is a big blow in a top 10 matchup like this one. But we'll gladly take the ball back and in the end, ultimately no harm, no foul. Forcing me to make a big play call here on fourth down and yo, this ball was nowhere near Stone Boston. Come on, man. I guess this ain't the Mountain West anymore after all, as I cannot get away with as many fourth down attempts. Back to the air they go. Barry's holding his zone down enough for Holly to deliver the blow. And even better, the cherry on top. They miss the field goal attempt. And on third down, we'll convert. No, we will not. So on fourth down, we will convert. Right? 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 Anyone? Yes. What a fine. Huge third down here. There's the conversion to Tim Williams. Around the midfield here, brother, that guy came in and threw us down. Second and 24, we have a wide open stone Boston. Big third down here, quick strike to Landry. He's open and he's in. Touchdown. Feels good to get on the board first. And now we have an opportunity here with a two minute drill to get some more. And of course, we're going for it on fourth down. Who do you take me as? A chump? I have to go and get it. Dog check, dog check. Who's gonna step up and be a dog? And when I see Landry going up against a linebacker. I thought I had a mismatch. Not too shabby from the big man on that play. And 
Huh? The big man was clamping it down, and on fourth and 12, Cade, fight for me, fight for me. Did he reach? He was inches short. Feels like the SpongeBob meme right now. How many times are we gonna teach you this lesson, old man? I mean, we don't learn on the fourth down turnovers. Baylor's got it moving quick here, third and one, and what a deflection by Gabe White. There's the two way. And you might be thinking to yourself, where is Gabe White these days on offense? Well, we have way too many dogs in the receiving room. We've entertained the idea of keeping him as a gadget type player, but there's guys like Landry where we're not just gonna bench him. Really, at the end of the day, it's a good problem to have as we have have so many good receivers so like I said that's a good problem and that is a bad problem here deflection interception they have three seconds I don't think they'll get anything out of it though Baylor driving with a sustainable drive after the first half they had to regroup and it seems like they found something early third and two we are going to give up a touchdown so now it's a tie game all of a sudden and we have to go to work and Cade says just give me a second I'll show you some work I'm going to call the play action clear out here just clear everyone out sling went up to stone boston and he hauls it in that worked out better than i thought it would got our lead back as we should and defense man another blown third down they definitely fixed whatever needed to be fixed at halftime and it looks like a much better product thankfully their kicker shanked it and you know what that's going to be a real problem in the next game too you're going to actually have to spend some time trying to recruit a good kicker. Oh yeah, the running back's just open, or sorry, the fullback X tight end was just so open. That's right, it's fourth quarter football, and we're gonna step up in a big way here, getting the hops, trying to jump over a man. Big first down nonetheless, and Landry is breaking free through the secondary, laying out for the touchdown reception. Oh man, he is special. Two touchdowns is all the cushion our defense needs as I think we can wrap this one up. Really not trying to get ahead of myself though because this is the seventh ranked team after all. I mean, they're here for a reason. And that reason, McIntosh is probably one of them. Not having his brightest game today, but he's shown glimpses of what he can do. And he's got a nice ball. Second and inches, I'm coming in hot. And that is a strip sack fumble they jump back on top of that one but david barry trying to do some damage and they don't jump back on this one we get another strip sack fumble and recover this time third and 21 we need a conversion and i don't see anyone able to do it for us and so mcintosh is quickly back down into our red zone dbs step it up we don't like letting things get closer than they need to be and oh baby that was close man in motion we're gonna bring some heat and that will hold him to third and 12. Baylor thinks it over here. Timeout called third and 12. Now they're going to have to face a fourth down. Got to hurry it up because of the clock. And on fourth down, they want to convert. It is no good. No points. Nothing. Nada. It's our ball. And when it's our ball, we do whatever we please. And we run out the clock. This game's over. Nolan Scope, player of the game. We landed the mother load. Four big commits. Salona Beach Sponges. We got a surplus of available points and we don't got a surplus of good prospects to scout. So I'm gonna clear up this board and I'm gonna go peek at some of the five stars that maybe aren't getting too contested from other schools. I just know I got points and want to spend them. We need a new kicker, so why not get in the habit of adding them to our board to scout them out? We're gonna need to in the next game. Fresh set of guys, any good ones, and starting off with a gem ain't bad. 75 outside linebacker, I like it. And cool, Gabe is the best kicker we found out of the bunch, so let's offer him a quick scholarship, throw him all the points. The ongoing series with Appalachian State continues this season as well, and let's head over to their home. These guys not doing so hot early in this this season so uh, I hate to be the bear bad news but it's gonna get a whole lot worse after beating number seven Baylor we dropped down a spot question mark we're now fourth in the nation I thought we were third in the nation regardless we have to put our head down and just go to work and that's exactly what Zach Miller plans to do just because they're one in four and just because they're in the Sun Belt doesn't mean they can't beat anyone in fact App State has had some historical upsets in the day they came close to beating us a season or two ago but I don't think we're gonna let it happen this time across the middle it is Landry calling in the contested ball coach Philip Rivers on the pedal man he says go for it fourth down I don't care who they are now thanks to that conversion we're at midfield and a wide open stone boston breaks loose a little curl flat action there he is joe davis love it when we come out guns a blazing six for six now seven for seven and the big six baylor kept us honest last game and i'm wondering what version of app state we'll see in this one i want to see the version that gets denied by our defense and there we go 
know Gabe White putting the catching acrobatic skills to good use. Let's continue to steamroll these guys. Moving in the right direction. I'm gonna let this one fly. I think I got Williams and I did have Williams, except he was out of bounds. Eh, why the heck not? Let's challenge the catch. Couldn't really tell from my angle, but it's worth a try since we hardly ever use it. Left foot. It looks down, man. I mean, if you're counting the drag, yeah, they keep the play as is. So it was worth the try, in my opinion. It didn't work out. That's okay. Because what will work out is this big fourth down. I'm sure of it. Stone Boston made sure of it, too. Scrambling out to our right. Is anyone going to get open? I'm going to dump it back out across the field, across my body, Tim Williams. And after that catch, he got knocked out. So let's hope he regains his composure. Yeah, this one's trending on the verge of a blowout, if we're being honest. And holy moly, Goodman came in there like a heat-seeking missile. Dude was just standing here all day, and boom. Dang, the pressure came in, but it was no match for Zach Miller and Stone Boston. And no match once more for Stone Boston. He's got a clear step just outran everyone in the vicinity. You know, it's a bad day at the office when you're getting burnt by a big tight end. I mean, come on, man. And Landry, that's not like you. The shutout in jeopardy here. Big third down going nowhere. So at least we'll hold him to three. Trying to get some last second points here before halftime because that's exactly what you do when you got the lead. Like seriously, why run out the clock when you can go ahead and just get more points? I mean, who doesn't want that? And okay, maybe that's why you run out the clock. So you don't do stuff like that and speaking of running out the clock that has been something we haven't been doing too great of a job at right now as you can tell they're gaining on us leads to a giant fourth down here will we get the stop and yeah we do and with that turn of events we get the ball back and we can ice this one out in a big way with a big block miller oh man and why not leave nothing to doubt let's finish it off here landry down the sideline could be chewing clock but sometimes the best insurance is simply more points and speaking of more points there she blows <laughs> and right wrong guy things got a little bit interesting in this one with a minute left they scored again thankfully they didn't get their onside kick taking it down to the last second snapping it off it's a touchdown as time expires thanks for hosting us appalachian state we appreciate the hospitality and it turned out to be a closer game than i was hoping here at the halfway point we have been doing enough to rack up four straight wins after the miami loss this time we're going up against another one win team at the moment it's the arizona state sun devils two and oh in big 12 play we're looking to take that up to three and oh Sun Devils in town. First play of the game, it's to Stone Boston. Man's got some grippers. And we'll take the momentum as we can get it. That's what we like to see. Getting that momentum on this first drive is oh so crucial because it sets the tone. Just calling a good old slants play, get some extra yards, it usually works out. And we're gonna bench it out to Cade, bouncing off the DB into the goal line, first and goal. And now that we're all the way down here, why not dump it to Scope, who pushes it to the one? And sure, I'll get outside my comfort zone here just a smidge, and I'll flick it to Scope anyway. That was unnecessary. Triple options, I'm telling you, still gotta get the hang of them. Thankfully, Nolan cashes in. Defense looking to feast, and we get the stop on third and inches. Back to the ground and pound, Nolan Scope looks prime for a big game. He may only have five yards right now, but I don't know, I just feel it, you know? It's one of those things in Landry. Dude, I just love the burst to the outside. Stone Boston is wide open. Love to see Landry stepping it up out here as he just continues to get his racks. Been a solid contributor week in, week out. I know I can count on him and I can count on Dwayne Cade just as much. Out the gate extremely hot and that is exactly what the doctor ordered. Arizona State out the gate pretty slow and yeah I think they need some help for sure because get the bus warmed up. Zach Miller is carrying y'all to the exit. I'm just sorry to all my Arizona State fans out there right now. We're holding you guys to 12 yards in the game compared to 227 in our first quarter. When you're down this big early, it just feels like there's hardly any chance left. I mean, what are you guys going to do? I mean, okay. I'm impressed with how that last play worked. I'm not going to lie. I'm surprised it converted. And then it was third down. They just need something short. First and goal. 
Arizona State threatening here. They want points, and we're going to drop them back for a sack. Now, third in goal. What do we got? Another sack. Sun Devil fans rejoice. You guys got three points in this contest, and that's better than nothing. I think the Big 12 is on notice. I mean, they see what Solana Beach was able to do last season in the Mountain West, and I didn't think there'd be any pushover this season in the Big 12. I mean, shoot, if there's a team out there that's counting us out after winning a national championship, I don't know what they're doing. In fact, I'd argue we can beat a team like my Miami any day of the week. It'd be like a 50-50. Before halftime here, holding it down, not letting the Sun Devils do nothing, and hold the phone. Was not a fan of seeing it looked like Goodman out there, lost in space. And yo, a strip sack fumble. Arizona State hurries back to the line, snaps it off. It looks like Chauncey's gonna take it again himself. Well, right when the second half started, Arizona State took it and ran. They scored on one play. Sometimes they hit the home run, but it doesn't mean that's gonna be the story of the game. The story of the game usually is defined by consistent drives, play in, play out, finding guys like Landry, splitting the defense, and scoring six. Fourth quarter football, Arizona State's hit the home run just a couple times here, and they're hoping for another one. Like, man, the quarterback's only completed it nine times, but he has 194 passing yards. Third and five for Chauncey. He is scanning. He had a couple guys open, especially one right in front of him, but fourth down. He'll throw it out of bounds. And here we go. Fourth down. It's all on the line. Do they have what it takes? Osborne in coverage straps down the, the receiver, winding the clock down in this one. We'll take some extra points while we're here. Capping off this game with a rushing touchdown. Nolan Scope daggers and ices this one out. All around performance today from the offense. So good work from Zach Miller and company. They get it done. Five straight wins. We're rolling in the Big 12 is trembling. And what a difference one week can make. We catapult back into the number two spot. So that means we're still in line for the national championship. Nebraska at number one. That's crazy. But what happened here is Miami. They lost in overtime to Georgia Tech. So hats off to you guys, and I appreciate the assistance there. Wisconsin was the other team ahead of us, and they also lost to Indiana, so man, hats off to everyone here. It was a joint effort. Well, shoot, just like that, we're at the halfway point. We're five and one, at number two in the nation, and in the next one, you will get the answers to everything. Will we win a Big 12 championship, back-to-back -back national championships, all of this in our first year in the Big 12. There's so much going on right now. The team looks as strong as ever. These sliders and Heisman difficulty really ain't putting a damper on anyone on this team. So, so keep soaking it up with your boy King Sponge. Hit that subscribe button and I'll catch y'all in the next one to see if we can become back-to-back -back natty champions.